Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean. Thanks for stopping in for part 5 of our Let's Build series here at Hangman's Alley. In today's video we're going to see how I was able to add those oil lamps in to those metal posts. We're also going to see how I added in these lamps to the back of these Nuka-Cola mixing machines to give it a really nice effect. We're also going to see up at our game room how we added in the cycling lights and hid all of the electrical wiring to help give it a really nice and clean effect. Okay, once again, we've got a lot to do today, so let's get the video started. second floor where our game room is going to be. Now there are quite a few objects here that are going to need to be hooked directly up to power so it is important to set this area up first before we run the rest of the electrical through our build. I've got a computer sitting on a couple of carpets that way we can move it and insert it into the wall as far as we'd like it to be. I'll take a second and kind of straighten it up, line it up and then we'll see how far into the wall we're going with it. The idea here is, is to get it close enough or into the wall far enough that we can hide the wire that will be connected to the computer to make it work. Next we're going to bring over this quarter floor, place it down over top of one of the carpets, click on the carpet, let it come up, we'll store the one the computer's setting on, and what do you know? The computer drops right down and is flush with the top of the floor. And we don't have an unnecessary carpet there cluttering up the area. And yeah, I think it's uh, back there far enough. The next thing we're going to do is bring these magazine racks over, line them up and place them in the best we can right now. The reason that we're doing this is so that when we pull the floor out, everything goes with it, and we don't have to align these up later on with all the electrical connected to them. So we'll take a second, get them in here. Now one thing to keep in mind if you're doing this, and you're going to put cycling lights behind something, give it a little bit of space between the object and the wall. That way you'll get a lot better glow effect from the lighting. All right, we're carpeted a container. We're bringing it over to our computer to help kind of cover the ugly stand. And if you notice, the container is just a little bit too high and it doesn't really look good. So if we go ahead and store the one carpet, it drops down into the floor and it really sets our computer up nicely. has a good look to it. Now we can go ahead and take our floors out and put them down on the ground where it'll be a little easier to work on them. We've got a lot of electrical to place onto the back of these magazine racks. The first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and put a couple of electrical connectors up. And we'll put one on each one of these four magazine racks. By doing it like this, it will help insert the wires into the wall where we won't see them running back and forth to one another. Now we'll go ahead and connect them up. And I've already placed an electrical connector down on the floor behind the computer. We already know that that's where the wiring's going to be, and it'll be hidden nicely. Now I've placed a few of these cycling lights on these letters and we're going to place them onto the magazine racks. Sometimes some of these lights are not positioned on the letter just right and you may have to reposition the cycling light on the letter better so that it's not inside of the object you're placing it on. Now we already know from previous videos that we can't hook the wire or the electrical directly up to the cycling light doing this without using the wire glitch. So that's what we're doing right now. Now the one floor is ready to go in. So let's take a look at our bottom floor, how we've run the power up to it so far. This first electrical conduit is where our power is coming in. 
It's brought in from this metal post that has another electrical connector on it. And it's connected over to where our conduits are underneath of our door where our workbenches are. It has a wire that goes up to our switch, then to our door. The other wire goes up to an electrical connector at the top. This feeds power up to the upper part where our living quarters are at. Now let's go ahead connect one of our electrical connectors on the magazine rack up to this electrical conduit that's being fed off of where our main power is coming in. And as you can see the cycling lights are on and all we need to do now is color them before we insert them back into the area where they go. And we'll place it back up here and you can see how nice and easy that'll snap right back in. Not, it keeps wanting to go in the one way. <laughs> All right, we finally got it in. There we go. And we can see the lights behind there. They're glowing. And it puts a pretty nice glow on the wall because the magazine racks are far enough away. And at the bottom, we can see when we insert that concrete foundation back in, it will hide the wire pretty nice. Now, I've already placed an electrical connector on this concrete foundation because this is the one that goes beside it. It's where main power will be fed in to the rest of the build and our elevator. Now I've already set a few electrical connectors up back here underneath this non-scrappable building. That way we can run power to our elevator. Also I do have a, another laser trip wire over here in front of this building and we'll need to run power to that using the wire glitch as well. The next thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and place our first foundation back into where it goes. Because we have some railings and a ladder up there it just snaps right back into place perfectly. Also, we'll want to take our second concrete foundation and wire glitch the wire up to our second story floor where our computer and magazine racks are at. We can then color them lights and we're about ready to put it back into the build too. But first, we need to put a couple of floors out so we have an easy place to walk around while we do all of that. Now we're going to want to go up on top of the third floor and pull out one of the prefabs. Place it out front someplace and you can see I've already put an electrical connector down. Now all we have to do is take the wire glitch from the second floor, run it up to the third floor, connect it up, and right now pretty much all of our power is running through the entire build. So we'll go back up on the top floor place our prefab back in and because of where we put the electrical connector it's hidden inside of the wall and we don't see any wires running. Now we'll go to the second floor grab the floor that has our computer on it and it'll snap right back in. And there we go ladies and gentlemen that's how easy it was to run all of the electrical in this area. Now we'll just go down to the bottom floor and place our second concrete block back in. Now this foundation was a little bit tough to get in here. I actually had to snap it into one area and then get a hold of it again looking down more at the ground. So if you're doing something like this, remember, like I said in previous videos, sometimes looking more down at the ground will help snap those objects in easier. And now we can see how our wires running after everything's in underneath our elevator. Now it is showing there a little bit, but it's in an area that we'll never be, so I'm okay with that. We'll never see it. The final thing left to do is put our metal post back where it belongs. This way, all of our wiring is now hidden underground and in the walls. And if we ever need to pull it out and work on it, it's pretty easy to grab that post, move it back out, and do whatever modifications we need to do to it. Alright, now for the part that I hope that you've all been waiting for. How to put these oil lamps up into the center of these metal posts. Now this is part of a technique that I've used quite a bit throughout my build career here in Fallout. And 
If you guys would like to see more about how I do this and what other things you can do by doing this, let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to make another video on it. I think we'll call it How to Make the Carpet Glitch Your Bitch or something like that. <laughs> okay, here we are up on the floor where our living quarters are at. I've placed a few floors down to make it a little easier to work here. The first thing that we're going to want to do is put out a half of barn wall or warehouse wall whatever you want to call it snap a floor to it now we can take a curved concrete floor and the curved concrete walls and we can move this floor up or down to the desired height that we want these lamp posts to go into those metal posts I've chosen to go up three floor thicknesses higher I'd like a little bit of the oil lamp to stick out of the top more than just the glass part. So we'll lift our floor up and now we've made another floor to work on as well. Here we've placed out three carpets and we've got one of the oil lamps on it. By doing this it allows me to extend it out over the area up to the metal post. And we'll spend a second here and line this up to the center of the metal post the best that we can. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to take and store one of the carpets that's holding the oil lamp. And if normally if you do this, this is what's going to happen. As soon as you store the carpet, the oil lamp's going to drop straight down. And that's way too far. We don't want the oil lamp down in the metal post that far. What's happened is it's dropped down to the closest object it can set on which happens to be this wooden railing. So we're going to create a way to make the oil lamp drop down to a spot where we want it to drop and it's pretty simple how you do that. We're going to use these trusty letters that we use for everything to do it. Now if you put the letter right underneath the lamp when you store the carpet it's got to drop down so it's going to bypass the letter and drop back down to the railing again so what you want to do is move the letter down about one floor thickness below the lamp and sure enough when we store the carpet it drops down and sets on that letter and if we grab the letter look we've got the oil lamp sitting on top of it and that ladies and gentlemen is how you can control how far an object drops when you are using the carpet glitch now once again like I said if you'd like me to make another video explaining this a little bit better and more in detail and actually what kinds of cool things you can do by doing this just let me know and I'll be glad to make one once again on the other side we repeated the pro same process and what do you know we have two oil lamps that are exactly the same height and they're you know sticking out the top of those metal posts I think it really gives it a nice cool effect and this can be used in a lot of different circumstances you could use them as you know like um, path markers or something like that there's a lot of uses that you could do with this technique and yeah that really looks good now all I gotta do is just add in more railings and finish this area up alright I've got something to show everybody just before we start the next segment and that is if you put a carpet or one of these mats on top of each other it makes kind of a stair step effect well I've learned how to make a seamless carpet or mats placing them together in one straight line if you guys would like to see a video on this let me know this is pretty cool and it's useful for a lot of things alright this is how we're gonna set our new Coca-Cola machines up we've got the one in the middle is our carpet or mat that's holding all the other mats so we'll bring our first Nuka Cola machine onto it and line it up now we can carpet a second cola machine bring it over put it where we want and use the same tip that we saw earlier to bring it up on top of this quarter floor 
store the carpet and it drops right down and on top of the carpet. By doing this, that cola machine is actually setting on the carpet now and will move when we move the carpet. This way I can get these extremely close together and we don't have any collision issues. Once again, I do the third one and all three of those are actually setting on these mats now. So when we move the mats, they'll go along with it. And they're nice and tight with one another. Now all we got to do is bring our lockers over, set them in where we would like those, and we could carpet them as well if we wanted to. And it all sets together nicely on these mats. All right, now the next part is going to go a little bit quick. But this is how basically I added in the lights or the lamps behind them. What I did is I placed the lamps out in a fairly even area and they're far enough apart that if I go to group select them, they don't select the other lamp. Now we'll go ahead, grab a concrete foundation, place it in the ground and lift them all up at the same time. Now I did hear from a friend of mine today about another item that sinks easily into the ground and it is the post for the ball track system. Now I didn't make any clips on that, I just wanted to mention it. Thank you Insane Shecklador for that information. So not only does the concrete foundation sink into the ground well, apparently the ball track post sink into the ground here at Hangman's Alley as well. Now we can use a concrete pillar, bring them over to our cola machines, line them up the best that we can, and just go ahead and place them in. And I'm using the same area of the cola machine to line them up and make sure they're in all together evenly. Now we can group select the center carpet and it will bring the lights and everything else in with it. But because it still thinks that we've just picked up the center mat, then we can actually place it down wherever we want just like we were using the uh, carpet glitch. And that's how simple and easy it was to bring these cola mixing stations over here into this area. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's about it for today's video. I really do appreciate you all for coming and hanging out with me throughout this series. Now I hope that the tips and tricks that we saw in this series really helps you out with some great ideas of your own. And once again, if there's anything I can help you with, just let me know and I'll try my best to answer them or create another video to explain what you would like to see. Alright everybody, have a great day and just like always, until next time. Stay safe and peace.